Hey guys, it's Rev again. Today I have for you a super compact 5x5 door. This one's only 3 blocks wide and 351 blocks total. It also opens fairly quickly for a 5x5. So. There's closing, it's not super fast, but opening is quite fast. It's only a it's pretty fast because it only has to extend from the top once, unlike how a lot of previous 5x5s have to do it twice. And it's only 9 blocks wide, 13 blocks tall, and 3 wide. So, we can get started on the tu to tutorial now. We'll start with the piston layout. So you want to find the middle of your area. Go 3 blocks up and build three double extenders here. These are going to be your main double extenders to grab blocks from the door. And for storage, you're going to build a piston here with two blocks there and a double extender. This is going to get the blocks from the middle here and pull them to the side. Then you're going to build or that, that's right. piston. Pistons here sort of in this zigzag shape. This is going to be the storage for the majority of the blocks on the bottom. Then, from there you're going to build your side pistons. So just a column of five of them on both sides. Just like that. Then, on this side, the opposite side of that double extender, you're going to build a second one here. And more storage on this side. So, just like that. And then, on the top here, you're going to build three triple extenders. These are going to be your, for your main extension down. So, just like that. The layout, the storage for the layout is somewhat complicated. But because you only have a triple and a double instead of a quad and a triple, it's a lot easier to build and allows our door to become a lot more compact. So it's gonna build some blocks here for where the ceiling of the door is. And we can start with our input block. Which is gonna be right here, so two blocks up from this block in the wall. Just can put a lever there. And underneath it you're gonna have a hopper. And then detecting a pulse from the hopper, you're gonna have a observer there going into a block with a dust here. This will power this first line of or this first row of pistons, which will push this row of blocks down into the door. And then from there we're gonna have a repeater going into an observer with a block here and a two tick repeater here. This is going to extend our double extender. Then in order to retract it we're going to have a dust here coming from the input with a four tick repeater going into an observer with another one tick repeater into a piston here. We're going to have a hopper and a lamp here and two observers facing down. So what this will do is, when it extends, it'll just power this hopper here, which will retract the double extender without pulling this block back. So it'll be left right here, where the triple can push it down again. But when we're on opening, when we want to pull the blocks back, it'll power this lamp, which will first which will power this hopper here, and pull the piston back and when the lamp turns off, they'll power this piston here and fully retract the double. Then on this side, we have a two tick repeater coming from the input. I'll just go into, now we'll go into a note block here. And then here we have a dropper. This has to be a dropper, it can't be a note block because it has to be an immovable block. 
Now, no power this piston here. We have two observers and one to the side. She'll power this one here and push this block down. And then to extend this piston again, we have an observer facing down. So now, if I can activate it, you'll see it'll, the triple will push the blocks down and it'll fill the area in front of the triple again with blocks to be pushed down again. I might just move these blocks down here when we deactivate it. You'll see it'll clear the area from the triple so it can fully extend. So now we can move on to triple extension. We're going to have a toggle here and this will get butted by this block here and updated by that piston. And from that toggle we'll have a four tick repeater going up into a dust here, a block there, and a lamp here. Now I'll go into this observer with a four tick repeater here. And this whole setup here is important because we want a pulse that's longer than four ticks to go to this line here because we want to power this line of pistons long enough that we can extend the ones when we're at <clears throat> this level here. It's from there. I'm going to go over one more block and just have a update our piston right there. Then from this lamp we're going to have an observer going this way into a piston here. This is going to be our main slider to activate this top row of pistons. So, we have two observers there, and just a piston here. And so we can't, we have to find a different way to power this piston because we can't have an observer here. Because that will power this piston here and push down the blocks when we don't want it. So instead, we're going to have a glass pane. You have a glass pane here, an observer there. And so this glass pane will change states because it won't be connected to this block anymore when this extends. So it'll be able to power this piston when we need it. Then we can put a block here from this observer and just place redstone down for this line. Then that redstone will go into a block here and the torch. And so this important because we will sometimes power this line with one tick pulses to finish off the extension during closing. So this torch will filter out all the one tick pulses so we only the long pulse from this repeater will actually cause the torch to turn off. From there we'll have a piston here with an observer here and this will retract this piston because we don't when we push it back we don't power it from the slider then we'll have two observers here which will also power this slider. So now when you extend this or turn it on, you should just push the blocks out and push them in like that. And the last pulses will be handled from the bottom. And if I just move them down manually, let me turn it off. Seal. Extend like that. And then there's two more pulses, which will also be done from the bottom. You can reset that now. <laughs> so now moving on to the bottom. <clears throat> from this note block here, we're going to have an observer. So will power this redstone here, and this will do power the entire row of side pistons. Then from that, we'll have a piston here going into an observer. If we go down into a sticky piston here, this is going to have a piston attached to it. Then an observer here, which will detect when this piston extends. A hopper here, then a piston observer going into a note block. Then another hopper. We'll have observers facing up here, and this will power our first row of pistons in the double.
from there we're going to have a three tick repeater which will go into a lamp with two observers checking the output going to this piston two ticks here this will be our double extender from this side and then from there we'll have a four tick repeater which will go into uh, observer seven no block there and dust here and this will power these two pistons this will also go and power this piston here and finally we have a to toggle here but since this the piston here so this makes it so this piston here will only extend every four pulses so that's one two three and four so you want to make sure that's left in this state here. The door is open or closed. And this will make sure that this piston doesn't extend at the wrong time and push this whole column of blocks up. We don't want that. Now, one last thing is for the this double to fully. You want to control when this piston retracts because on closing, again, just like the top one, we don't want it to fully retract and pull the block out. So we have a dropper here, which is butted from this block, which will go down to this piston here with two observers going back up. So, so when this extends here, the observer will detect the pulse, but there will be no piston here getting powered. So this observer chain will get, won't get any pulses. But then when this retracts, there will be the piston here. So when this observer powers, it'll activate. The piston and then these two observers here fully retract the double. Okay, so I did make one tiny mistake here. So this block here should actually be a hopper, not an observer, because that observer was pounding this and messing up a bunch of stuff. You gotta make sure that this piston, the block on this piston is out, like that. So on closing, what should happen is it'll power and push these blocks up and then fill in the space again. Let me power it one more time, and this piston will also get powered. It'll go to this state, then we double extend them out. And then on opening, the blocks will be like this. And we'll power it once, like that. Retract this block and power it again. Actually, this row of blocks will be pushed down by the triple wide end. We'll power it again. Then we just have to do the double extender. So the sequence for the bottom is the same for opening and closing, which makes it's one of the reasons why the bottom can be so compact. <coughs> this top of that messed up again. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have so since this block only gets um, extended and retracted twice during the opening, we're gonna have a because of this toggle here, we're gonna have a second toggle here, and this is gonna be um, the one that activates our double extender, just like that, but connected to this observer line. We're gonna have two observers here, and another toggle here. Actually, this block is pushed it like that. This will power this block here, which will have both power this piston <clears throat> and will power this hopper, which will lead the entire thing to fire again. Then for the double extenders, just a simple one of these observer-based ones like that, powering from this four tick. If you see that this redstone dust actually will power this piston here, so. In order to prevent this observer from being moved, we're going to have an observer coming from this one in the double and a piston facing down here. So now when this <clears throat> turns on, this observer will be pulled up like this so this piston can't retract it and cause the entire bottom circuit to fire again. Then once this redstone turns off, we're going to, this observer will activate again just pushing down that one there. Now finally for this side piston, the last pulses to the top, I'm going to take an output from this note block here, <clears throat> this 
Let's go into a piston like that. It'll face up into a dust there. <clears throat> and another block here, which will power the side pistons. Let me take an output from the side pistons on a toggle like that. Because when these pistons extend, they'll give two pulses. Then it'll go into a piston here. So this piston will get bug powered by the observer. And then two observers going up into this line of redstone. And this will give the two pulses that we need to fully extend the or to extend the top on closing and fully retract it on opening. So you should be able to just activate the door. Yep, so it closes perfectly fine. Now an opening fully extends, the bottom pulls down the blocks, and the last two pulses get the triple to retract. Now we can just fill in all these blocks here. Just like that. And wash the door one more time. There's closing. And there's opening. So, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.